small turn out today, but welcome to the call. Uh, so the goal for this session was to have more of a discussion around the plan changes to the spec for um, the 2.0 version of the modeling spec. Um, so I'll just give a quick update on some of the other progress on the other work, and then we can spend the rest of the time talking about those, uh, those revisions. Um, so it's just general status update. So those have been on the mailing list on Open Access Slack. We've seen, uh, we've published an updated draft of the booking spec. Um, so there's a 0 0.6 draft, which now has uh, a, few, a few more details in a few places. Um, there was some missing content around refunds, cancellations, um, which is now there. There is a note about booking free events uh, and some initial kind of proposals around how we clarify what terms and conditions apply during booking. Um, so that's there ready for comment. Um, I've had a couple of minor bits of feedback on the spec so far, but it needs more review. So I'm hoping that others can uh, pitch in on that. The next round of work is to just check uh, to see how facilities fit in with the API. Um, I think it's gonna be fairly straightforward, but um, Chris, who's leading that spec work, is gonna be reviewing that this week. Um, and then the other thing that I realized that we need to think about is how we make scheduled events bookable. Um, so there's a proposal that I circulated a while ago about how we put URL templates into schedules so that um, people can build the the URLs and also the API endpoints for those events from those, from basically those kind of calendar descriptions. So I think we need to, in order to be able to make as much as possible bookable, we need to think about that as well. So um, there's a separate um, proposal that uh, we need to do some work on. Um, activity list, uh, we've got a uh, community meetup on Friday to talk about um, moving that piece forward and I'll do an update on that in the next call in a couple of weeks. Um, so unless there's uh, questions from either of you on that, I'll let, we'll jump straight into the, the data quality stuff. Nope. Okay. Um, it, Luke, uh, sorry, is it worth you just, um, it's just doing a brief uh, thing about the conformer that we're planning to um or you're planning to create so that everyone's aware of that yeah um so i mean yeah it hasn't been uh much designed yet but yeah we do uh intend to build a um something on top of the the validator um that is presently being built that um gets the output of that and then as well as um verifying that it's accurate um, conforms it such that it um, matches a, a tighter subset of the modeling spec um, so that it can fit into one consistent data structure like a, a database or whatever um, and be searchable in a consistent way across various things um, yeah we're not completely sure what that looks like yet um, I think event schedules is, is one part of it. So, uh, for example, in, in our database, it's, it's very it's useful to store things as um, separate timed things so that we can do sorting and filtering, etc. Uh, so that's something that the conformer could be able to do. Um, yeah, that's something we'll be building in the next. Well, the current plan is to, is to be building it. Yeah, within the next two months. Okay. Um, and so that uh, Titus subset is that a subset different to what's in the what's in the what will be in 2.0? So like a further profile that I'm in a working on or? Um... Uh, so I haven't actually yeah we haven't actually looked at the spec of 2.0. Is that um, is that now available to? No, we're just starting to, <laughs> starting the discussion now. So there's the there's, there's the proposals I'm going to walk through on this call. Yep. Um, and then the what I uh, the roadmap I went through on the last call was that we'd have a draft of 2.0 by in the next week. Okay, so yeah, that that will definitely feed in, feed into it. Well, yeah, I suppose it depends on. So that's a draft, but um, we will be um, yeah, depending on how much that changes things, we might not uh, refer to it too much and, until there's a stable version. 
Uh, yeah, so the, so the goal is to have a, a draft next week and then publish it as a the next iteration spec by the end of August. Okay, so so that that will be stable quite soon. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's, that's why I want to uh, spend a uh, chunk of time on this call and in any ongoing discussions outside the calls to make sure that we get some um, feedback on the changes to make sure that everyone's happy with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would we'll be good to see them. Yeah, okay. Get into it, yeah. uh, well, well, let's uh, let's uh, move forward on that then. Um, so, in terms of scoping 2.0, I've done a, a few things. Um, the the project board for the opportunity spec has been updated. So, I've moved uh, a number of other issues into the under discussion under, under discussion. Um, column. Um, the core of it is the um, validation, but also routes. I've added in the URL template proposal I just mentioned. And then there were some other smaller issues that are uh, all about, well, there's a few bugs, but are all about um, tightening up validation or are related to um, some of the work that's gone on about booking. So it felt like it's a kind of a meaningful chunk of things to try and move move forward. Um, so I want to try and get some revisions for all of these things into the, the spec next week. Um, what I wanted to focus on today was this first proposal, uh, which is issue 78. So um, I filed this a little while ago. Um, I haven't had any detailed feedback yet. We, we, we discussed it at a high level on one of the previous calls. Um, but basically the idea is to try and um, remove, well to do two things, uh, remove some of the flexibility in the specification to make it easier for people to decide how to publish their data. So less, less options is, is good. Uh, and hopefully that will also increase the consistency and quality of the data that's being published. Um, by also having a uh, tighter spec it will be easier to implement the validator that we've got that we're working on in parallel. Um, so that can give uh, more consistent advice rather tell people more clearly what they need to, to fix the feed rather than presenting them with further options. So the, um, the meat of the proposal uh, is uh, a set of basic rules that uh, wanted to uh, inform rethinking through bits of the spec. So what I was going to do is kind of go through those so we can have a chat about them. And then separately, I've got a spreadsheet which um, uh, has some detailed changes to the data model uh, in light of these rules, but also a few other uh, revisions as well. So um, let's let's go through those. I'm going to make my screen slightly larger so it's easier to read. Um, so give me feedback as we go. Um, some of them are pretty uncontroversial, some of them will not need a bit more thought. Uh, so the first one is uh, removal of null values, so no empty properties. Right? So we just, rather than having it, if, if you can't fill in a property, don't include it, rather than giving it a null value. Uh, the second and third ones are similar, so no properties with, which are empty arrays or no properties that are empty string. So just don't include, if you can't fill in can't provide a meaningful value for something, don't include a, a, an empty field. Um, we know that I think there's some, some feeds that, that have this. Uh, any pushback on that? Should I keep reading until you have a, you disagree? That would be a way to do it. All right. Uh, next one, I think is uncontroversial. Numbers should be numbers, not strings. So coordinates, attendee numbers, prices, everything that's numeric should be a JSON uh, uh, number rather than a string. Okay, uh, related, anything that's Boolean should be a JSON Boolean value, not a string either. Oh, on the um, number four, sorry, um, yeah. prices, I don't know if you've seen the, the issue on prices about the 2DP uh, situation with the string and some back and forth on that. Um, I, I think, so I agree with what Paul says. I just wanted to acknowledge that issue and the comment that was made on it about the different languages um, the, from different perspectives. Um, so I know that some people find it difficult to, well, not difficult, but it's, a, it's an extra bit of, uh, um, someone's got to 
present that as a two decimal place value on their front end and ensure that that's valid, um, which is fine. I think that's probably good, but just wanted to acknowledge that. Okay. So, so but basically happy with the proposal. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so I think those are the uncontroversial ones. Um, so number six, there are a number of properties that, that can have either single values or could be arrays. Um, and I think what we should do is say that they should always be arrays. So anything, so things like activity, image, organizer, um, could be leader, um, that all of those should be just say, it should be an array, even if the array only has one entry and then code can be consistent in what it's expecting rather than checking for a string or an array. Sure, definitely agree with that. I think that's actually one of the things that the conformer we were thinking about would uh, would have done as well. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, can I check on organizer? Is there a reason we have more than one organizer possible? Um, I couldn't think of a reason to say it should only be one. Um, what I mean, I, the, what I was thinking about, you might have, uh, a, you know, I've been at events that are organized, jointly organized by different organizations. Fair, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so the next one, um, the other area of variation is that sometimes we allow properties to have a value which is a string. Um, so obvious example there is an activity name. And sometimes um, we say it could be an object. So we can describe an activity from a, an activity list as an, as an object. The same is true for image as well. Sometimes we just provide a URL to the image or you can just use a schema.org image object and then include more information about it. So um, what I propose here is that we should just be clear about what the preferred default should be. So we could keep the variation, um, but say, uh, we prefer objects over strings. So we would prefer you to use a concept or an image object, but it's fine to use a string value. Um, personally, I, although I wrote this, personally, I'm actually leaning towards saying objects everywhere, just to, again, for consistency, and it just becomes easier to add new, new fields in. Um, but that would be, uh, uh, you know, would obviously be a stronger change. I think most impact things like activities. So instead of having an uh, array of strings, it would always be an array of concepts. Yeah, I, I do understand that from a consistency point of view. But um, uh, I mean, I, I don't really think it's a problem yet, but at some point we are having quite large JSON objects being passed around between APIs. Um, larger than they need to be. I mean, uh, I think that's probably a bigger discussion than, than this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the other thing, the other angle on this is um, I know that Lee, the opportunity API stuff's out of scope, but the, we looked at it a little bit um, because of the facility stuff and um, we've probably seen some issues on the opportunity stuff. There's basically a question about when we come to do filters, you want to be able to reference things consistently so that you can filter on them in a consistent way. So for example, image.url contains something, could be a filter. But obviously if image.url or image, because it could be, you see what I mean? Like, I, I guess, does that, is there a, um, is that the other side of it? Like it would be bigger, the, the objects would be bigger, but at least the values would be in consistent places so that things like filters could reference them consistently. But then is that trade off? I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is what I went back and forth on. I mean, I think what I've got here at the moment is just the smallest change. So we just, at the moment, it, we don't give any indication of what the preference might be. So I, with um, with the concept, I think I, I think I understand for images how that would work because this basically just gets moved into one of the properties. With concept, is that just a pref label on its own without any ID or anything that then it would be translated to? It would, yeah, it would be a type and a pref label. So just concept and pref label. Yeah, which would mean then um, uh, any, if you're using it from a, uh, an activity list, then you would just have an extra property to indicate what list it was from. So that would be any, the only change there, rather than going from 
a string to an object. Yes, that makes sense. So I, I, I would actually suggest almost like, like Luke was saying, that's a separate topic of having these like reducing size because potentially there are ways to optimize size like ignoring all the type fields and I don't know, a whole bunch of stuff we could do to chop stuff down. Um, but if you were, so let's say that we did that and like there was a, there was a, a mobile friendly part of the opportunity API that gave you back something without types because you don't need them. Um, then actually the number of characters difference we're talking about for an object with an embedded name versus or pref label versus not. I wonder if it's best to just have objects for consistency because otherwise things like filters are more difficult, things like referencing stuff's more difficult and everything just becomes, well, for all the same reasons. Yeah, I don't understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I think actually, yeah, I can, I can agree on that. If you, um, if you have some kind of thing where you can specify what subset of, of things to be returned, then the consistency is more important and the space offer, the size offer is, the size issue is uh, somewhat resolved by that. Yeah, okay. So perhaps we'll revise seven then to be, uh, we'll just use objects. Yeah. Okay. That sounds, that sounds good. Right. Um, eight. So date time properties must include a time zone and should default to UTC. So it's mostly about being clear. Firstly, just being clear on what time zone your dates are in, uh, and then just having a, f a recommended default time zone. Yeah, it's not written there, but I assume it's also got to be ISO eight eight six zero one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, cool. But it's supposed to be that format anyway for uh, schema all. Fine. Um, so yeah, it's just that being consistent about requiring time zone. So I think that's relatively uncontroversial. I think other other data formats things do similar. Uh, nine, uh, duration properties must be an ISO 8601 duration. Um, I think there have been a few places where we've had just the text weekly or monthly or something that might have been in some of the early proposals. And I yeah. think I just want to be clear about what we're doing there. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, 10 is not quite worded correctly. Uh, type. <clears throat> yeah, so at the moment, I think, well, we can look at the spreadsheet, but I think nearly everything has a type at the moment as required field. There's only a couple of subsidiary objects. Um, that's being that's proving useful at the moment for, um, for some of the validation stuff because it provides a hook, you know, for being clear about what, what object. Uh, is being described and as um, we add more types like types of event I think it could be more useful. Um, yeah again in the opportunity API and um, there's an issue raised about uh, field spec so you could request certain fields from an object which would then mean that you could request obviously to it not include type uh, but this isn't about validating that subset this is about validating the overall object so yeah. So. Um, uh, 11 or 12 are kind of related there's uh, looking at the spec I think generally we're, we there's a, there's a few inconsistencies around use of ID and URL um, and I just wanted to try and be clear about what the rule was so for ID I think there's some key objects in the data model events places offers etc that need an ID um, uh, partly because we, it'd be useful to have, as a, somebody harvesting a feed, for example, it's useful to have a reliable identifier in order to merge data from different sources. But also the ID field is where we are linking into um, the APIs. So the ID of an offer, for example, the ID of an event is being used as part of the booking. Um, so I think we just need to be uh, clear about where we're expecting those. There's only a few what I've called subsidiary things like postal addresses or quantitative value where I think they're unlikely to have API endpoints. Um, so they probably don't need that requirement, but I think the others will. Um, and similarly for URL, um, things that we expect to be on the web or, or need to be on the web. Uh, should have a URL. So events, places, organizations, image objects. Um, there's a couple of th a couple of places where they're not required. So I, no, I think again, look at this 
the spreadsheet, but I think for organization, I think it's recommended for a person. People don't always have the URL. Um, so I think I've made it optional there. Or you could have, they'll have URLs, but there's other ways to, to put kind of social links. Well, I was going to say, in, in some cases, places don't have URLs, uh, depending on the data source. So I guess maybe there's a event definitely does an, an image object also has a thumbnail URL and a other type yeah. of URL you can set. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me, let me jump over to the spreadsheet. So off those, so it doesn't like there's any major issues with those. So what I've done is I, uh, just for my, for my benefit, so I can make sure I track everything I need to revise in the spec. I've just put all of the tables of properties on the current spec into a spreadsheet. Uh, and then I've worked through that and all of the issues and these proposals to see what needs to be changed. Um, so I've linked this from the proposal. So there's all of the different uh, object types in here. Uh, along the way, I've noticed there's a few properties that are, I think were in common use, but we haven't referenced properly in the spec. Um, so I've included those to make sure that we um, revise them. Um, and then I've gone through and applied some changes. So to just filter it down to what's changed it's quite a few um sorry to be clear that I, I think we had an old discussion about this but uh we used to say that stuff from schema wouldn't end up here because we didn't want to duplicate schema but it, are we are we saying now that we would rather have it all consistently in here and make a make a, a good uh, exhaustive list um i think where where we are defining there's so we don't want our spec to necessarily end up with it being a complete clone of schema.org because that's not productive. No. But I think where we want to be clear about how we're using some of that. Right. The profile. Properties, yeah. uh, and if we are uh, putting a tighter set of requirements around formats, types, et cetera, then I think we need to document that. Um, and so the, probably the best, I think the best place to do that is in the spec. Great. So, but other things, we might just put those into the, the developer documentation or other guidance um, and they can make their way into the spec if and when it's useful to do it. Um, so for each of the things in the, the spreadsheet, I've marked if it's changed and then I've put a note about what has changed so we can kind of step through it. Uh, I'll come back to the location bit in a minute. So you can see for like the first line here for image, I'm saying that that would be uh, it's an, an array now, uh, and it's an array of image objects. Yeah, this is where I was prevaricating earlier about land strings. Um, if we go to activity, so based on what we were just discussing, then that should always be an array of concept. Um, if we look at, uh, say, organizer and contributor, those can either be an array of the person objects or organizations or mixed and this so that's an example of where it'd be useful to have the types because you need to be able to distinguish between those particularly as they've got quite a few fields in common just like name url id that kind of thing um so quite a lot of these changes are just based off that the uh, always an array um there are a few things a few properties uh like age range that i've bumped from being optional to recommended Because I think we, for the purposes of uh, encouraging some consistency, including age range where you have it is a good thing rather than just saying, oh, you know, don't have to worry about it. Because I'm yep. just conscious that people might just skip over immediately things that are optional. Um, so trying to end up a bit more, uh, we might have changed leader, but end up with a bit more that optional stuff is where we know that it's, um, there's some choices to be made around the modeling or alternatives rather than it being a, a, a strong recommendation. Uh, on uh, the next one, gender restriction, in 2.0, are we able to shorten those URLs we talked about before to not include www and s? Not include them. As in, as in the, the, there's, uh, I think we've got uh, two different implementations of the enums right now. Some providers are already using uh, the equivalent so schema.org are all http colon slash slash schema.org slash as like the minimum minimal string as a prefix um, and we have two different implementations we have 
http colon slash slash openactive.io slash which is the equivalent of schema and we also have https colon slash slash www.openactive.io as a so they should all they should all have a consistent base because they're the way because they're all defined in the same namespace so they should all be at the the, the same base url as the, the namespace document which i think is https right okay uh I see. In which case, I guess what I'm asking is, can we make the namespace document shorter? <laughs> As it's a 2.0 change. Right, okay. Yeah, that will mean changing the JSON-LD schema URL and everything as well. So yeah, that is a bigger, bigger change. But definitely can be, it's a time to do it if we're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'll put that down on the list. Um, uh, some, something else, sorry, uh, uh, 13, 14. Organizer is generally organization and contributor is generally person. I, I don't know if we want to recognize that as a, as a preference, as you were suggesting with others. And also leader is generally a person um, because of how, what, what those things are in most contexts. But I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if that's useful to recognize that. I think the reason I ended up with, I, I mean, you're right. And the, I think the reason I went with this was just consistency that if you're looking at those properties, it's, uh, I mean, are there cases where it might be led by an organization rather than a person or organizer, you might have a mixture of a named person and organization. Yeah, I guess the way we've been semantically at the moment, it's almost like if there's a leader of the event at the, at the event, then that's where they're a leader. Uh, if there are more people, so generally if, if there are several other people responsible for the event, then they're contributors. And then, so there's one leader, uh, or sometimes two, uh, and then there's several contributors, um, but they're all people. And then the organization, I think the way it's defined in the spec actually, in the words are that the, Organization that ultimately responsible for the event is what the organizer field is. Um, which is obviously a specific thing. Double check because might say the personal organizer is personal uh, organization ultimately responsible for an event, be it organize, organization. Or yeah, person. that's right. It's so, person. so we've generally been using that as the oh, yeah, that's true. Contributor is person. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Is leader also a person? Yeah. yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so it's just, pro, it's just organizer. And then I guess the question for organization is, is organizer always an organization? Um, I suppose you can have peer-to-peer -peer events, so maybe we do want to have uh, a person. But then my question would be, semantically, is that person then the leader rather than the organizer? Um, if there's just, so, if basically the only situation you wouldn't have an organizer as an organization running it is a kind of jumpers for goalpost style, you know, ad hoc event that, that find a rate, find a player create or something. Um, and in that case, would you actually not put an organization in? I just wonder whether it would be, yeah, we basically, if you have a, if you have a badminton session that's been set up by Joe Smith using find a play, find a player is Joe Smith then the leader of the session rather than the organizer. Um, yeah, I, I kind of see what you mean because um, it may be that you could say that technically someone, a, a person has organized and that person is slightly different from a leader or a contributor, but um, in terms of this data being useful, th those are all, there's perhaps synonymous enough that the, the type is uh, a more important thing to have specified. Yeah. So. So of other than obviously that, that mistake I had there, what I haven't done anywhere is change the semantics of any of these properties. So we had we had a back and forth around what leader, organizer, and contributor were, and felt that there was a leader role that was different to the organizer. So I think we had this similar discussion on one of the previous calls. So, so I want, what I guess I'm wondering is, um, just looking down that list, there's only one property left on the list that could be two different object types everything else is consistently one. 
and so if this is the only one left that is um, just just two, maybe it's worth <coughs> as part of the tightening up. Given that no one has yet used it as a person in all the data sets being opened or planned to be opened, it's always an organization. Um, maybe it's worth us taking the opportunity to tighten it. We can always loosen it later, but at least the tight version of the spec is tight across all types so that we can guarantee that. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. But the other thing to note is that at the moment in the spec, uh, we only talk about having the only differences between a person and organization. Um, is uh, organizations have a logo otherwise we're only asking for a name and uh, you know the identifiers and links names and description so even though it is two types the kind of default set of information is actually similar between the two right yeah i think i think what some people have started to do is use things like job title and um image in uh leader to talk about the, the kind of role of the person that's there um I suppose the other issue is that, of course, a person has GDPR implications, whereas an organization doesn't. And so if someone was playing safe, they might want to ignore the leader fields if they're data users, whereas the organization organizer field is a organization you wouldn't expect to be uh, under the same rules, essentially. Okay, we probably need some more input on that one. But yeah, like you say, it is only the, I think it's the only one but if, if it's worth us, yeah, maybe maybe starting an issue for it and just, just checking if, I don't know, I think open sessions might be the only people that would have a view on it. Maybe maybe Playways would about it as well. You could try and get some more opinions. Um, because if it's that if that is the only thing stopping us from going full, full tightness on the spec, and meaning that we can re reference everything reliably, then maybe it's worth getting that input. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is reliable in the fact that there will always be a type on these things, so you know what they are. So um, it doesn't feel like a huge overhead. I mean, clarifying, we've already improved things by um, adding consistency that it's always an array, it's always a, an object. But yeah, all right, well, let's see if we can get some other, other input. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, just keep an eye on the time. So most of these are kind of things about making change to array. There's a few changes to things like last year long shoot to uh, be decimals, booleans. There were a couple of things that aren't in the current spec that need to be. So actions, entry points, potential action, so stuff that's coming through from the booking spec that needs to be in here. Um, the only other changes are smaller things like, as I said, where I've just marked things as being uh, recommended. Um, I've got here marked in red, something that we could maybe just spend a few minutes talking about. Um, there's, there's, in the current spec, there's quite a bit of flexibility around how location is specified. Um, so at the moment, you can define location as a string, as a, so just a whatever, Bit of blob of text you've got in your in your database, uh, a postal address, or a schema dot org place, uh, and then we did that deliberately at the beginning to to, uh, to think about the widest set of use cases. So I was I had in mind things from the kind of long tail of publishing where people might not actually be coming, bringing in stuff from a structured database, and they might just have you know we're going to meet in the park by the by the pond kind of thing, right? So that's where we got that variation. So I'm wondering whether we want to keep that or, or whether we should be tightening it up. Yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely used um, in all three of those different ways by various people, the various organizations. Um, it, there are quite a lot of, there's quite a bit of data that we've seen that does have the ad hoc location uh, and ad hoc address field and um, I know that in the um, the location uh, in the place object, you can have a postal address within that. Yeah, and that has a street address. I mean, if if all they really had is a bit of text, could the recommendation there be just to put that into the street address field um, within that object? Well, the street uh, 
the address object, the postal address object is structured, so it would need to be broken out into the different components of the address. Um, than lumping it into street address. It's yeah. So okay, okay. Um, that's the required way. To, that's the intended way to use the postal address object. Okay. But yeah, we'll end up we'll end up trading off that people will just stuff addresses into that field because we allow it. Yeah. Is, is there an equivalent of what we were doing with activity uh, concept before where we would just default to a certain field like pref label? Could we put the content into name, for example, um, and then not not specify the address? So the name of the place becomes what was previously just the string used for location. Yeah, we could do that. Um, some kind of halfway because the other the other advantage I'm thinking is that in some cases, um, and this um, there's a from a data user perspective, there's a need to consistently render what schema.org has as, a, as, a, as an address with that postal address into a single string that can be used for UI. Um, yeah. And so if that same field was able to be used for that purpose, then, then potentially some um, the, um, aggregators, for example, that are trying to create uniform um, accessible um, accessibility across all the different data sources could just be pulling stuff out of the place and pulling it into that field to ensure that there's a consistent field, but also that same field could be used to dump stuff in. Yeah, so we could, so I think there's, well, there's a couple of options. We could keep the current variation and just accept people are using it. We could uh, do what Nick's just suggested and stuff the value into an existing place property like name. Um, which has got some downsides, I think. Um, or we could um, require place, but allow some flexibility around address. So at the moment, we're saying address, the address property of a place has to be a postal address. But in schema.org, they allow it to be a text as well. So rather than stuffing it, we could just a, a, a take. Um, use that. So at least a location would be consistent. It would always be a place, what, address, what, but an object or a string. What, yeah. what would, sorry, go on. Yeah. Um, what, I don't actually, so yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of forward to what, further to what Nick was saying earlier. Um, I'd say that at least in all the use cases we've seen, as I'm in, um, we've only ever used the, the full address, address as a string before. Um, uh, I'm sure that there are some benefits to having the, um, the the structured components of the postal address, but not all providers can provide that. So, uh, is there some way we, that the uh, the address just as text can be required, and then the um, a more structured postal address just be an optional thing? Um, so it's not quite clear how you do that on the schema.org place object because it addresses you for both. Well, that's a good point. And I was going to, to add to that, actually, um, the Google Reserve has a requirement. They will only use componentized addresses. Um, so data, if data is published, I think this is already a note somewhere in one of the validated things. But if data is published without the components, they just won't take it. Um, so there's quite a strong incentive there, given the scale of Google, to for publishers to start doing that. And it, whenever we've been working with publishers recently, I've been advising them of that. And often they've actually been managing to pull components out of somewhere. <laughs> it's amazing actually when you ask the question, suddenly they can can do that. Not in all cases, absolutely. But um, and there are cases like Book When where the address is just a massive free text field with multiple lines and lines can be entered and people write like, you know, turn left at the tree in it. And it, the, the stupid thing about that is in Book When, if that free text field isn't uh, a parsable address, then you can't geolocate it. And so it just ends up literally being a cat, you know, you know, turn left at the tree, uh, which isn't useful. So I, I think where, where in situations where there is actual free text being used with no constraints, it, it's bordering on not useful in those cases, because if you can't geolocate the thing, then, you know, um, yeah, it's not that, it's not that good. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you, you can have, um, if, if there are more specific instructions required, because some places are actually difficult to find with just um, a structured address and that long. 
th there is there's like a meeting instructions or, or something field. Yeah, so we had to, so we had some discussion around this. So there's this meeting point field which is um, intended to be more specific. So for larger locations where might several possible meeting points, being clear about where you actually need to turn up at the location that's specified. Um, so that would mean, yeah, you could say the location is the park and then that's where you would stuff, you know, we're going to meet by the pond kind of thing. Um, it could be that we recommend that if all you've got is completely unstructured free text field and you're not even sure if it's a, um, an address, you know, then use meeting point. Yeah. Don't specify location. Um, and then if you have something, you have anything else, then use a place and do your best to uh, extract the address components. It's, a good, it's an interesting point, you know, I wonder, because the people that are just publishing meeting point in that scenario just won't get their stuff listed. I mean, no one's gonna be able to geocode it. It's just not gonna appear on any maps or any location searches. Um, and it's, it, this is a global database. It's not useful to have data with, without a pin on it because it's hyper-local information. So, um, I, th I think I feel like there is a thing about you know, I mean people people just need to sort their data out to an extent. If if they're if they're really serious about publishing data and they haven't got something geocodable, then you know is it even worth us allowing that to be? I'm, I don't know. It's almost that that feels like it's in the like required state as other things that we've got are. Yeah. So Luke, where you've seen um, location referring to a string. Is it is it always just a uh, an address string? Uh, it's been it's been both uh, an address string and a hybrid of address and meeting point. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was a like, how we could put some consistent practice around it, um, but it sounds like it's. Um, is, is there another field we could use in the postal address uh, object that was um, one line? So we could use name or something, or I don't know what else is in there. Um, that, or uh, you, you could, well, it inherits a name from thing. So it would be a, yeah. So you're basically saying postal address and then rather than trying to extract address components, which can be difficult, if there isn't, if it's just generally not componentized, however, it does contain a postcode and it's geocodable, then you put it in as a name in the postal address. And the, and what we're basically saying in our guidance is anything that's got a postal address, we expect to be geocodable if you don't already have geocoordinates specified. Otherwise, you need geocoordinates. Um, and and then in the case where there's just like random nonsense in there, like you said, with meeting point merged in, then there's a task for somebody to fix that. Yeah. I it. <laughs> Yeah, so they'd have to extract it in order to, because I'm a bit wary about making plate not required, because we've got the flexibility at the moment, we've been, it's been okay to make that the required field. Um, so I, I think what we're saying is, I don't think place is ever, I don't have any data sets where place is a string. I think it's more that the address object is a string inside location. Sorry, location is never a string. It's the address object inside location in the place that's a string sometimes. I, okay, I must have misunderstood what Luke was saying then. I thought he was saying that the location properties, he's seen that as a string. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not completely sure which it was. Um, right. Yeah, it could have been either. Uh, yeah, we can, so we're checking that. I mean, doing away with postal address and always requiring a place just to wrap it in, it seems reasonable, um, except what else are we requiring with an ID, but you can generate an ID. So I, I, I would suggest not, I would suggest not having an ID for place as a mandatory thing. I think what you said before, not every database provides that. Um, yeah. if, it, if, it, if it becomes completely optional, that means there's no way to merge things based on ID, which I think but, but I think I think the wider problem there is that there's um, there's sometimes there isn't a cross database uh, best thing to go on is lat long because there just isn't any global reference place 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 IDs that Google has are not a proprietary and can't be used in this context so yeah okay 
Um, So is the question now, so it sounds like what we're saying is location is, is always a place. The question is, what about address? Yeah, it comes down to, it comes down to this, um, whether we uh, want to allow that to be text. Or do we use name in postal address instead? It's name already in postal address. It's not. Well, it is, as it's not, um, we're not, Defining, defining that because we were trying to encourage people to use the more structured approach, uh, although we hadn't specified country, which I've included now. Yes, that's really important. Google Reserve also requires country. Yeah, I'm a bit wary about just stuffing stuff into other properties, like the name of a... Well, for, for other use cases, I'm just thinking, you know, in, in the I'm in use case where there's a address that someone wants to render into a single string, intelligently um but but not compromise on providing the full data for those that want it the name seems like a natural fit in that scenario for yeah i mean having having a field does make sense um the name name's a, a bit of a strange one um because with other fields i feel like it tends to have a, a different meaning um i mean <laughs> yeah to be honest, I, yeah, I, I suppose it's, it's not, um, it would render less trustworthy the components of the postal address. But um, yeah, I mean, it, for me, I, I think I have actually seen people use street address for it before, but just the whole thing. Um, but yeah, yeah I, can see, I can see the problem with that. I can see the problem with name as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the people struggle to do this is why it's defined, you know, the address property is defined as either text or post address in the first place. Um, yeah, well, I guess what we're really skirting around here is whether we, we accept it to, to, to uh, it's another one of our exceptions to our rule of like trying to make everything strongly typed where possible. Um, this will be another variant which then can exist in both. But, but I, we, I, cool. I can say we, we have tightened up we are tightening up the location property, reduced var potential variation here. Sure. Currently um, at the cost of this variation. Well, and the other thing I was gonna say is that that use case we just talked about where uh, an aggregator might want to create a, a user-friendly address, really, was what it is to, to be um, printed on a, uh, a GUI, because a lot of the time people don't wanna you know, print components, they just want a string. Um, that that field potentially is the same requirement as the stuffing field. Um, so if we if we go with text in postal address, that doesn't solve that. Although I know that's not a primary requirement here, but it's fine. But it, um, so I'm going to have to wind up the call actually because I'm late for another uh, another conference call. Um, but one thing I'd note is that if you were in the position of wanting to enrich or fix uh, data being able to identify, okay, this address is a is, is text string rather than a structured value gives you something to key off. Whereas if people are just starting to put text into a name property, you don't know what's in there. They could, you know, could, you know, perfectly validly get, use it for the name of the house or the property or, or something as well as. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I think if, if we're ending this call quite soon, is it the case that, um, closest thing we have to uh, something which is a sort of compromise is that uh, location is a place. Um, now that that is set in stone, but address maybe can't yet be set in stone as a postal address. Yeah. Mm. It's text or postal address. Uh, yeah. You know, at least at least this one iteration of tightness. Uh, Nick, you, you might be right that, that really everyone can actually structure it. I think Problem is that some people might start structuring it using uh, regexes. They might have a string and then go, maybe the locality is the last uh, thing if you comma split the string, yeah. which will lead to weird stuff. Totally, and, and the Google reserve requirement should compel people to change their field structures, but you're right, uh, there's no point in enforcing that prematurely. There should be a business reason to do it and change the database properly rather than just re regexing stuff to get it to fit the spec when we ask to implement. 
Okay, uh, th so that was that was a useful review. I, I'm going to have to jump on another call. Um, what I didn't get to, there's the second tab here, conformance criteria, are a list. I'm trying to pull out all of the must, should, must not, etc. from the spec. Um, uh, we, we started to be a bit more explicit about some of these additional requirements in the last spec uh, around stuff like age range where we, you know, we started to describe how to use the min and max values. Um, there were already a few in the spec, um, but I'm just trying to capture them more explicitly here and see whether there's other things that we want to put in. So um, have a look at these as well. Uh, let me know. Have you already gone through all the issues I raised and are they in there? Um, I think so. So I've got things like offer should be to decimal places, uh, adding is accessible for free if there's an offer with a zero price, uh, removing of trailing commas. Great. Um, so when, when I do the next set of, um, uh, re of reviews, am I adding to this spreadsheet instead of raising new issues in that repo or what? Um, raise an issue. I'm, I'm using this as a, as a kind of support tool for me doing the, the edit changes. Okay. Um, because in some cases, some of the things you filed, I've ended up, you know, it means I need to change some stuff in here and put some conformance codes here. And I'd just like to have oversight of what's going in. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, thanks both. Uh, that was useful. Uh, I'll do some follow up with everybody else afterwards and, uh, hopefully we can, uh, Get to a nice tidier spec. Nice. Cool. Thanks. All right. Cheers, guys. Great. Thanks.